hello everyone welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here welcome to the family and if you're a returning subscriber welcome back i appreciate each and every single one of you guys so much god bless you so today let's talk about prayers um more specifically let's talk about habits let's talk about the habit of prayer prayer is such an important part of our lives as christians right Prayer is a fundamental part of our lives as Christians because prayer is communication with God. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is opening up to Him. Prayer is listening to God. Prayer is building communion with God. Prayer is building fellowship with God. Prayer is building relationship with God. Prayer is trusting God. I heard a, a, a preacher say the other day that when you do not pray, that is a sign that you do not trust God. And so knowing that prayer is such a fundamental part of our lives as Christians, why is it that we find it so hard to pray? Why is it that we find it so hard to build that habit? Why is it that we take prayers for granted? Why is it that we have the energy to do so many other things, but then when it comes to our prayer life, all of a sudden the energy is gone i was talking to somebody the other day and you know they, they talked about the fact that when it comes to the things of god we have to make the extra effort we have to go the extra mile sorry about the lighting it's it's really not good i hope that you can still see me when it comes to the things of god it takes extra it takes you know some extra effort when it comes to the things of God, we have to fight more in order to be able to get those things going. But then when it comes to other things, you know, the worldly things, it is so much easier for us to, to do them. It is so much easier for us to, you know, get into the habit of taking care of all the other things. But then when it comes to the things of God, it is an extra layer of fighting. It is an extra layer of struggle. And that is because the enemy knows the benefit that you stand to get from having a powerful prayer life. The enemy knows the benefit that you stand to get when you have a consistent prayer life. The enemy knows what you stand to gain when you have that consistent fellowship with God. And so it is. it comes as no surprise that prayer becomes such a difficult thing for us to get into the habit of doing. But I want us to be able to get to that point where prayer is, prayer is part and parcel of our lives, where prayer is not something that we even have to, you know, think about. It's prayer has to become, you know, something that we cannot live without. We have to get to the point where prayer is not an afterthought. We have to get to that point where prayer becomes the air that we breathe. It becomes like the air that we breathe because we need it so much. And, you know, it's, it's important that we are, that we are, you know, active participants in our relationships with God and not just spectators. Because when we do not have a rich prayer life, when we do not have a consistent prayer life, we're almost like spectators in our relationship with God. We're almost like spectators as opposed to being active participants. And God wants us to be active participants in our relationship with Him. So there's this study that says, well, there, there was a study that said it takes 21 days to build a habit, right? But there's a new study that has come to debunk it. It says it actually takes an average of 66 days to build a habit. An average of 66 days to build a habit. So even when praying does not come naturally, we should remember that just like anything else in life, it is a habit that we can build. Just like anything else in life, it is something that can be cultivated. Yes, prayer is a spiritual discipline. 
but it's a spiritual discipline that takes physical effort. And so we need to be able to cultivate the physical part of that spiritual discipline because the physical also has a huge role to play. That's why the Bible talks about the spirit being willing, but the flesh being weak. Because the flesh is a contributing factor, a huge contributing factor. We are flesh. We are flesh. We are human beings. And so we need to be able to work on that aspect of us so that we're able to cultivate that spiritual discipline which is going to enrich our relationship with god and so let's talk about that let's talk about those things first of all i want us to look at some quotes there are some quotes that i i wrote down one of them i'm sure that you've heard so many times it is by vince uh, lombardi he says watch your actions they become your habits watch your habits they become your character so what are your actions? What are the things that you do on a daily basis? What, what are the things that you're doing on a daily basis? Because it is those actions that are eventually going to become your habits. The thing that you're doing on a consistent basis, that is going to become your habit. And that habit is eventually going to become who you are. It's eventually going to become your character. If you're somebody that wakes up every day, you turn on the TV, you watch TV from morning till night, that is an action that you're taking. And that eventually, you know, doing it day by day, day by day, day by day, that becomes your habit. Because your habit is, I wake up, I turn on the TV, I watch TV, I don't do anything productive. And then eventually that becomes your character. Why? Because you become an unproductive person. You become an unmotivated person. You become a lazy person. So your actions will determine your ha your actions will become your, your, your habits and then your habits are going to become your character. So what are your actions? What are your actions? And then the other quote that I want to share with us is you'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. That's by John C. Maxwell. Let me repeat that. You'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. The emphasis here is on daily because it takes daily effort. It takes daily changes and the changes do not have to be big for them to make a difference. It starts with small changes that you make in your habit, in your daily routine, for you to be able to build that thing that is going to change the course of your life. And so I want us to, you know, look at practical ways, because remember what I said, it's spiritual, but it starts with the physical. So what are some things that we can do to help us, you know, change our perspective, to help challenge us to be able to have you know, that habit of prayer. The first thing that I would suggest is that we should have, we should identify our why. Why do you want to pray? What is your objective? Why is prayer important to you? It starts from there. Because if you don't think that prayer is important to you, you're not going to pray. If you don't think that prayer matters to you, you're not going to pray. If you don't think that prayer makes any difference, you're not going to pray. So what is your why? Why do you want to pray in the first place? What is it that you want to achieve? Your why has to be strong for you. Your why could be that you want to pray for people. Your why could be that, you know, you could say, for example, I want to pray for three people on a daily basis. That is a why. Your why could be that, you want to get closer to God. Your why could be that you have something that you're desperately asking God for. Your why could be that when you do not pray, you are a mess. That could be your why. Whatever it is, find a strong why. Why am I praying? 
or your why could just be that because God says I should pray. That could be your why. Why, why should I pray? Well, because God said I should pray. But it has to make sense to you. It has to make sense to you. It has to be something that grounds you. It has to be something that pushes you to want to keep going even on the days when you do not feel like doing it. Now, the second thing is, think about your daily habit. Think about the things that you cannot live without on a daily basis. Let me take an example. Water. Drinking water. If you don't drink water on a daily basis, what happens? Well, you're dehydrated. Your kidneys do, do not function well. Um, you might be weak. You might even faint. You might die if you, do, if you do not drink water, you know, on a consistent basis. Those are the things that could happen if you do not drink water. Your digestion is not good. You know, you have, you have all of these things that could happen. That is one daily habit. Now, another one is taking a shower. What happens if you don't take a shower? Well, you're going to stink. <laughs> um, you're going to be uncomfortable. Those are the things that are going to happen if you do not take a shower. Now, look at, take those habits and then trans, translate them into prayer. What happens if I do not pray? Well, I'm going to feel dehydrated. Dehydrated in what sense? Well, I'm going to feel weak. Well, I'm not going to function properly. If I don't pray, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to function properly. If I don't pray, my spiritual life is not going to function properly. My physical life is not going to function properly. If I don't pray, I am not going to be able to get the springs of living water that come from dwelling in the presence of God, from dwelling in God's word. I'm not going to be able to get those springs of living water. That is what happens when I do not pray. If I don't, if I don't um, take a shower, what happens? Well... I stink, right? I'm uncomfortable. Same thing. When I do not pray, what happens? Well, my attitude might stink. My behavior might stink. My thoughts might stink. I might be somebody that is just unbearable. I might make people around me uncomfortable because of my habit, because of my attitude. That's what happens when I do not pray. So you see what I did? I took, you know, things from the physical, from my daily habits, and I translated them into my prayer life. And because of that, I'm able to, you know, trick my brain into thinking about what will happen if I do not pray. It's all about tricking your mind sometimes. And those are some, some of the things that help you when you're trying to build a habit. And now the last thing that I want us to look at is when you're praying, Let's say that you're praying in the morning when you get out of bed and you decide, okay, I just got out of bed. I'm going to pray. Have you ever been in a situation where you start praying and then you start dozing off? You start dozing off or you start praying and then you start having all these thoughts. You're distracted. You know, one thing is, is going through your mind. One thing or the other is going through your mind. What I've begun to do, which I want to, you know, suggest to you as well, if you're not doing it yet, is move. When you get up in the morning, get out of bed. Get out of bed so that your brain, your brain gets the message that, listen, we're about to enter a different territory. Things are changing. Things are about to be different. We're no longer in bed mode. We're no longer in sleep mode. We are now in prayer mode. And so, Getting out of bed is signaling to your brain that, listen, we have to wake up. This is not time for sleep anymore. We have to wake up. And that, you know, energizes you, right? So you get out of bed. And if you're still feeling sleepy, walk, you know, walk around you, walk around uh, around your, 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 your room, your living room, wherever, but walk or kneel or do whatever, but get out of bed. So that you're able to get, get that energy or 
you know, if you feel like getting out of bed and getting straight into prayer is, is going to be difficult, do some form of physical activity. You could stretch, you could do whatever, but just make sure that your mind is alert when you're trying to get into the presence of God so that your prayer is as effective as possible. And the other thing is, pray out loud. Pray out loud. We see several times in scripture, Jesus prayed out loud, Moses prayed out loud, Paul prayed. People everywhere in scripture, people prayed out loud. Articulate your prayer. Have you ever tried to pray in your heart? Like, how effective was that? You find yourself repeating words. You don't even remember what you were praying. You, you, you don't even remember what you were saying. You don't even remember, you know, whatever it is. So get in to, into the habit of actually opening your mouth and articulating your prayer. It doesn't mean that you're screaming. If you want to scream, well, scream. It, but it doesn't mean that you have to scream. Just like Hannah was praying in the Bible, she was whispering. But she was moving, she was moving her lips, right? She wasn't screaming, but she was moving her lips. So make just make sure that as you are praying, you are articulating so that you know what you're praying, so that you're speaking, you're speaking that prayer, speaking it. There is power in speaking. There is power in the tongue. It's not for nothing that the Bible tells us about the power of the tongue. So make sure that, you know, as you're praying, you're articulating it. And that also helps you, helps you remember your prayers. And writing down the prayers as well is something that will help you build your habit. So as you're praying for something or a situation, write it down. And then when God answers that prayer, you look at it and you check it. Oh, wow, God answered this prayer. God answered that prayer. It pushes you. It motivates you even more to want to get into, into praying because you are seeing those results. And even if you're not seeing the results or even if you're not seeing results, just know that something is happening in the spiritual. Something is still happening in the spiritual because there's nothing as powerful as building communion with God. There's nothing as powerful as being in the presence of God. There's nothing as powerful as submitting to God. There's nothing as powerful as submitting your heart, your whole being to God. There's nothing as powerful as getting to that point where you just, you just, you just surrender to him in prayer. You just surrender to him in in, in, in thanksgiving, where you just, you know, feel his, his embrace and you're just like, Lord, this is me. I just want to be with you. I just want to spend time with you. I don't have a care in the, I just want to be with you. And that is what God wants. But for that to happen, we need to do the physical things that will help us to get into that spiritual realm. We need to build those physical habits that are going to help us get into that spiritual realm. And I want to share some Bible passages with us that, you know, would encourage us as we um, continue to, to strive towards, you know, getting better at prayer. First John 5, 14 to 15. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. So the confidence that we have is that when we ask anything according to his will, he's going to hear us. He hears us. And when we, when he hears us, whatever we ask according to his will, he's going to grant our request. So know this. Know this. God hears you when you pray. God, God hears you when you pray. God is ready to answer your request. God is ready to answer your prayer. And the other thing is Col uh, Col Colossians 4, 2 to 4. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. So how should we pray? We should pray steadfastly. We should pray all the time. We should, you know, persist in prayer. 
we should be watchful as well and we should have thanksgiving in our hearts so when we're praying we should also have thanksgiving in our heart right and we should watch and pray and pray for others as well we're not just praying for ourselves we're praying for others as well and Matthew 26 41 says watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation so because we are trying to stay away from temptation we should watch and pray because it continues to say the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak so remember how we're talking about the fact that we need to work on the flesh so that we can we can be able to you know do that that spiritual activity and Jeremiah 30, 33 says, Call to me and I'll answer you and I'll tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. So it's important that we cultivate that habit of prayer. It shows us that it shows that we trust God. It shows that we want to be with Him. It helps, you know, to 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 draw us closer to Him. He's there willing and ready to answer our prayers. And even if you fail, even if you go, you know, you, you've, you've, you've cultivated that, that, that habit and you get to a point where you realize that you might be failing or you might be, you know, you might have skipped a day, you might have skipped two days. Do not allow that to discourage you. Do not allow that to, you know, keep you from continuing because God does not shame you for your shortcomings. God will convict you. The Holy Spirit will convict you, but God is not going to shame you. The person that the, the, the person that shames you is the devil, not God. So if you feel ashamed, if you feel discouraged that you have not prayed for you know a couple of days or whatever, get back up. Get back up and keep trying and keep going and keep trying and keep going. Eventually you'll be able to form that habit eventually you'll be able to form that habit and do not feel less spiritual because you know you are trying to um use physical means or you know uh, um physical ways to build those habits because it does take the physical to be able to build that habit so that you'll be able to have the spiritual reward and if you need, you know, quotes that are not even from the Bible, like the ones that I shared, use them, whatever it takes, build that habit. Trick your mind until you're able to get past those 66 days. And afterwards, it's going to become something like the air that you breathe, whereby if you're not, if you don't, if you go a day without praying, I mean, it, it's not even going to be something that is fathomable because it would have become a part, it would have become a part of you. So I want us to work towards getting to that part, to that level where prayer is, you know, a part of us. Where prayer is a habit that we've cultivated so that, you know, we're able to change our lives by changing our daily routine. Amen. All right, guys, that's the end of the message. I pray that it blessed you. If it did, please like, share, subscribe, comment. And I'll talk to you in my next video, God willing. All right. Bye-bye.